Does your fridge currently look like this? And you'd like it to look more like this, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, today I've got you covered. In this video, I'm going to share with you five easy steps to give your fridge a Pinterest-worthy makeover. So if you're looking for some cleaning and organizing motivation, stay tuned. Okay guys, so here's what my fridge is looking like right now, and honestly I'd have to say it's not so bad. I've definitely seen it a lot worse, but I'm excited for a change. Right now things are just haphazardly shoved in everywhere, and that makes it really hard to find things. I'm also seeing an abundance of spills and plenty of crumbs everywhere, so I'm excited to get started. Step number one starts off like a lot of reorganizing projects and that means I've got to take everything out. Emptying everything out onto my countertops really helps me to see everything that I have and as I'm doing this I'm trying to keep my groups together. So my fruits and my veggies are together here and my condiments are together and so on. That's going to make putting these back in my fridge in an organized way a lot easier. And you guys, since I wanna take my time on this and really deep clean everything, I'm going to place my more perishable foods in a cooler with some ice packs. So things like milk, meat, eggs, and cheese won't just be sitting on my counter getting all hot and bothered. They're gonna stay nice and fresh in this cooler while I work. Now, this is the perfect time to toss out any expired food. Yes, some of these things are super old, and I'm just gonna go and toss those out. And I'm also going to toss out things that my family and I tried but didn't like. Now, thankfully, this doesn't happen very often, but if the food's been sitting in my fridge for a while and no one wants to eat it, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that too. And here's a pro tip when you're throwing out your food. Don't be like me and spill it all over the floor. Now, step two is all about cleaning. Now that I have everything out of my fridge, I'm ready to go ahead and remove all of the drawers that I can. That way I can get them into my sink with some hot soapy water. I just use my regular dish soap for this. And if my drawers are really dirty or sticky, I like to let them soak in the warm water for a bit before I give them a good scrub. Once they're all scrubbed out, I just rinse them off and set them out to dry. Now with my fridge, not everything can be taken out to clean. And that's where the vacuum comes comes in. Now I know that might sound weird to clean your fridge with a vacuum, but hear me out. I learned this tip from Meg over at the channel Love Meg a while ago, and it works amazingly. Now you want to make sure that you have a vacuum with a little extender piece like this. And if your vacuum is cordless, that makes it a lot easier too. This just sucks up all of the crumbs and it does an amazing job at cleaning out hard to clean spaces. Another unexpected item that I like to use to clean my fridge is a toothbrush. Now don't worry, this is an old toothbrush that is designated only for cleaning. This guy is perfect for scrubbing stuck on gunk and for cleaning out those hard to clean ridges inside your fridge. Now it's time to spray everything down. And for me, I really prefer not using a heavily scented or perfumed cleaner for my fridge. I really like these two cleaners from Method, hashtag not sponsored. These do a great job at cleaning and the mint scented one and the grapefruit scented one are my absolute favorite. They just smell so clean and refreshing. So now I'm just giving everything a good wipe down. I like to use a microfiber cloth for this, but a magic eraser also works really well. And now that my fridge looks sparkling clean and it smells like peppermint, it's time to re place the drawers so I can move on to my next step. Step number three is what I call the planning stage. Now, if you're really not sure where to start, you can go ahead and draw out your plan. I'm more of a visual learner, so this really helps me. Normally in this fridge, I store the milk in the door of the fridge, but recently I heard that that is not the best place to store milk since the door gets hotter than the rest of the fridge. And this can also be a time where you can try moving shelves around just to see what might work for you better. But after trying a few different things, and because of the kind of shelves that I have, I decided it would be a lot easier to not change the location of our milk. After all, even if it's not the quote recommended place, we've never had any issues with spoiled milk 
so I'm okay with it. For step four, it's time to containerize. Now, there are a lot of different choices when it comes to refrigerator containers. Some of these I bought a long time ago at Ross, and some I bought recently at HomeGoods. They range in price from $3.99 to $5.99 a piece. They're super sturdy and easy to clean. But I also have several really nice containers from the Dollar Tree as well. These aren't quite as big or see-through, but they are really great, especially for just a dollar. In the past, I've organized my fridge and my pantry using only Dollar Tree baskets. So you definitely can do this on a budget. I'll go ahead and link those videos down below if you wanna check them out. Now, I like to play around with these containers while they're still empty, just to see my options and to figure out which configuration I like best. And now comes the fun part putting everything back. If you were a fan of the game Tetris back in the day, this is definitely gonna be a lot like that. For my fridge, I created different zones for everything. If you know me, you'll know that I love all things rainbow. So I put as many things in rainbow order as I could. Starting at the very top, I went ahead and prepped some of my kids' favorite fruits and vegetables. This makes choosing a healthy snack a lot easier because they're ready to go. And right next to this, them, I put a lot of my favorite drinks. These fruit flavored sparkling waters are a lot like LaCroix drinks if you know what I'm talking about, but these ones are a lot cheaper because I got them at Aldi. And right behind them I've tucked a few things that I don't use on a daily basis. So back here we have extra pickles, extra yogurt, and some Parmesan cheese. On the next level I've created four different sections. Over here we have the egg section, and in our house we go through a lot of eggs, so I'm really glad that I'm able to fit three and eggs in this small space. Next is the dairy section. In here I have the yogurt I use for overnight oats and smoothies. There's also cottage cheese in here and sour cream. Next to that I have the meat drawer. And I love having a separate meat drawer, especially if I'm defrosting meat or just in case something leaks, it's not gonna leak all over my fridge. Then last on my shelf, I have our leftover container. Right now I just have a few things in here, but I like having a designated section. That way my family members know what they should eat first. Now moving on down to the next level, this one is all about the kids. Now if you're new here, I have four kids. My oldest is 10 and my youngest is almost four. So on this shelf, I put a lot of their snacks that they're gonna be able to get themselves independently when they need a snack. In this first section, I have some Greek yogurt cups. Next to them, I have some no sugar added fruit cups. In here, we have mandarin oranges and peaches and pineapple. My kids love these, but watch out, they can be messy, especially when you try to open them. Now this next container I've doubled up on and I have both hummus cups and yogurt tubes. These hummus cups go perfectly with carrots and cucumbers or chips. And then in this next section, I have lots of different applesauce pouches. We have apple blueberry and apple raspberry. My kids love these, but I love them too. They're really good. And then last but not least, I have just a few juice pouches in here as well. Right now, I have both grape and super fruit flavors. Now moving on to my fruit and veggie drawers. Now in both of these drawers, I've used two soda can organizers from the Dollar Tree just to separate out the different things. Over on the fruit side, I have apples, mangoes, and then I have lots of different citrus. I have lemons for my water in the morning, limes to add to my dirty Cokes, and my kids love to have these oranges in their lunches. Then over here on the vegetable side, I have some carrots and some celery and a cucumber, and I actually haven't washed these at this point. My plan is to wash them as I use them. Now that brings me to the little skinny drawer at the bottom, and I like to call this the meat and cheese drawer. In this first container, I have all of our different lunch meats and pepperoni. In the container right next to it, I've stored all of our sliced cheese 
cheese. So in here I have provolone and Swiss and cheddar. Over in the next container I have some sticks of cheese, both cheddar and mozzarella. And then I have just a few little baby bell cheeses as well. And then in this last section is another new thing that I'm trying out. I like to buy the big bags of cheese at Costco. It's a really good price if you buy them in bulk, but I wanted a better way to store the cheese in my fridge. So I just took two glass storage containers and I filled it with as much of the shredded cheese as I could. That's about four cups worth of cheese, so I think that's plenty. And then I can just store the rest of the cheese in my freezer. And yes, it is totally fine to freeze cheese. I do it all the time, no problem. Now, I love how this main section of my fridge turned out, but I do wanna very quickly show you the doors of the fridge. Over on this side at the top, I have some butter, some sauces I don't use very often, and some bouillon. Below that, I have some lemon and lime juice in case I'm ever out of the fresh kind. I also have some fancy butter, some cream cheese, and then in this kind of awkward space, I was able to fit all of my canned dough. So crescent dough, pizza dough, things like that fit perfectly here. And then on the bottom, I just have some salsa, some dip, and some other sauces we don't use very often, like honey mustard and Dijon mustard. Over on this other side in the top section, I have our maple syrup, our nut butters that need to be refrigerated, and the jam. Below that, I have our most used condiments. So we have mayo and mustard, ketchup, ranch, of course, I also have Italian dressing, I have the pesto that we absolutely love, and a jar of marinara sauce that I like to use quite often in lunches. And then finally, at the bottom, in its usual spot, I have my milk. Like I said, this hasn't been a problem for us yet. Over here, I also have orange juice and almond milk. And then right at the bottom, I have just enough space for four of these ready-to-go protein drinks. Step number five is all about labels. Now to label your fridge or to not label your fridge is definitely a personal choice, but I do think it's a really helpful way to let other family members or people in your house know where things are and where to put them back after they've used them. There are lots of different ways that you can make labels, but I saw a really great idea on the YouTube channel, What's Up Moms, recently. And for this, all you have to do is take some clear mailing labels, and you're going to also need a Sharpie, any color you'd like. I tried using a white paint Sharpie and a silver metallic Sharpie. Next, you just print out whatever you want your labels to say on just some regular printer paper. Then you place your sheet of labels on top, make sure to line it up, and then simply trace over the words. Now, of course, if you have really nice handwriting, you can skip this part and just freehand it, but I think this is such a quick and easy way to make labels, and they're also removable, so if you wanna change them out or reposition them, you can totally do that. Now, I hope this video gave you some good cleaning and organizing motivation. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you're looking for even more organizing ideas, you can check out these videos right over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Next time.